there within my heart a melody just Jesus whisper sweet and low fear not I am with thee peace be still in all life ebb and flow Jesus 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 sweetest name I know fills my every longing keeps me singing as I go all my life was wrecked by sin and strife discord filled my heart with pain Jesus swept across the broken strings stirred the stumbling cords again Jesus, 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 sweetest name I know, fills my every longing, keeps me singing as I go, feasting on the riches of His grace, resting neath the sheltering wing, always looking on His smiling face that is why I shout and sing Jesus 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 sweetest name I know fills my every longing keeps me singing as I go though sometimes he leads through waters deep trials fall across the way though sometimes the past seems rough and steep see his footprints all the way Jesus 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 sweetest name I know fills my every longing keeps me singing Soon he's coming back to welcome me Far beyond the starry sky I shall wing my flight to worlds unknown I shall reign with him on high Jesus, Jesus, Jesus Sweetest name I know Fills my every long singing as I go.
his feet to his head and told him all his children and his cattle were dead. But then Job's wife said, why don't you curse your God and die? But Job said, no woman, you're speaking like a foolish child. He ain't never done me nothing, done me nothing but good, nothing but He fed me when I was hungry, cheered me when I was sad, and he has been the dearest friend this child has ever had. He ain't never done me nothing, done me nothing but good, nothing but good. died for the gospel's sake they built a fire around his feet and tied him to a stake but the fire did not consume him so they pierced him with a sword the blood ran down put out the fire but still he praised the lord now all these years have served him he's done me nothing but good well i won't repent and i won't recant tell me why i should he ain't never done me nothing done me nothing but good nothing but good Every time I try to stand and start to fall And all those lonely roads that I have traveled on There was Jesus When the life I built came crashing to the ground When the friends I had were nowhere to be found Jesus In the wedding, in the searching, in the healing, in the hurting, like a blessing buried in the broken pieces. Every minute, every moment, where I've been and where I'm going, even when I didn't know it or couldn't see it. Jesus. There was Jesus. In 
desert In the shadows of the alleys And there was Jesus In the fire and the flood And there was Jesus And always is and always was oh. No, I'll never walk alone You're always there In the waiting, in the sun couldn't help but get over the message I was brought here this morning. He did a, you know, always a good job, and it, it is so hard to grasp God's mercy, Mary. It is, it is such a blessing for what he has done for us, the blood that he shed. That, that's just something that we just can't get over. I mean, he made that choice, and he did that for us because he loved us. We, we, we can't imagine his love. We can't imagine his mercy. And, you're, and Doug was right. We don't deserve his grace. We don't deserve it. But he gives it out anyway. And I am just so, so thankful for that. And we just take that for granted sometimes. And I'll be the first one to admit it. And there's a lot of things I take for granted, Mary. And like, pretty much like what me and you said, we don't ever want to use God as a spare tire. We want to thank him each and every single day. And we are a blessed church, and I am so thankful. He is here every service. And, I, and like Kathy said, we are blessed. We are spoiled, and we don't even know it. And there's a lot of people that would kill to have a church like this, the talent that we have. And there is so much talent here that, it, that can be used, and it can help a lot of people. And I just want to thank my brother and my sister-in-law for singing. You know, they think they're wearing them songs out, but I don't think they are. And I'm not saying that. No, they do a good job. No, I'm going to have Luke testify in a minute. No, I'm teasing. No, they could sing that every single service, and I can still get blessed. So, guys, listen to me when I'm telling you. You guys keep singing them songs because the Holy Spirit that just comes in, the anointing's there. You guys do a good job, and I thank you. And I... I know that I'm just rambling on, but I just can't help but thank him. I just can't help but thank him. I, every time I'm at the back porch, Doug, I look at this church, and I just... I can't get over it. I really can't. I really can't get over the, ble the of what we have here. You... I've been having such a burden for this church and I just can't get rid of it and I don't want to get rid of it. I love my church. I love my church. You know, ever since 2020, I know this is very shameful. That I mean, it had. A, we know how bad the year of 2020 has been. We shut down, we had to shut down and we didn't know nothing about it. I mean, we didn't know what to do. And you know that old saying, we don't really know what we have until we lose it. No, no, we did not shut down very long. It, it took, it was like a couple weeks, but, um, you know, it made me realize what we have here, and it woke me up, and, you know, I still can't get over that. I still can't get over that, and he's been, he's been good to us. He's been good to us, and it's, and it had to take something like that. It had to stop the world for me to wake up to what I really need to do, because I wasn't close the way I should be with my God. I mean, I'm just, I'm just putting it out there. And ever since then, I want to do more. I want to witness to people. I want to, I want to give up my all. I want to make sure that I'm doing God's will. And I know I made a lot of mistakes down the road. 
And um, sometimes it discourages me, but God picks me back up, Mary. <laughs> and um, I know I keep saying it, but I, I'm so thankful for my pastors. I, don't we have the best leaders here? <clears throat> I'm so thankful that we have leaders that are still speaking the truth. And I'm telling you what, they pour their hearts out for you, for you church. They, they do. They're up every night and they're praying and they're giving it their all. And they have other jobs that, they, that, that they're doing and they're, like, like Doug mentioned, said Saturday night, I got to get busy. I got to get ready for Sunday. And Tom does the same thing and I am just so thankful for them. I'm thankful for their wives. I'm thankful for Burnett. She does, as always, she does an awesome job teaching, pouring her heart out. She comes locked and loaded. And I'm just so thankful. I, I know I'm rambling on, but I just, I'm just so thankful, Mary. I don't ever want to fail to thank him. I love him. And, I, and you know what? I'm thankful for my seniors. My seniors right here. You know, they have a lot of other health issues. They're, they're, they could have, they have a thousand reasons to stay home, but they are here tonight, and us young people should be ashamed. I do believe that, and I'm so thankful for you. I always looked up to you seniors, and I'm thankful. I'm thankful that my, both my mammals are still here, and I do miss my, both my papals. I really do, and I know I'm going to see them one day. <laughs> I'm just looking forward to that day, and it wouldn't hurt my feelings one bit. It wouldn't hurt my feelings one bit if he came back here tonight. <laughs> I'm ready to go, ain't you? I'm ready to go. And I love him tonight. But like, I'm, I'm sorry to ramble on, but I just couldn't help myself. <laughs> I love him tonight. Steph, go right ahead. I down, but I knew what he meant, turn me loose. But uh, <laughs> we do appreciate the, the testimonies tonight. And uh, they went right along with the message. That's how God works things, isn't it? Uh, appreciate all of you being out. We have... A lot of our people out tonight, we realize that for graduation parties and all that, and we have a couple visitors with us tonight, so once you've been here once, you're not a visitor anymore, so next time you'll be one of us, okay, so I uh, appreciate you coming out and being in service tonight. Uh, there's a lot of uh, people talk about keeping it real, and uh, I know Doug this morning done a wonderful job preaching the word, and uh, sometimes we get up here and we, I know what he, what he feels like. You spend a lot of the week, and I did. I've spent several hours this week trying to seek God for what he wants for my future and for our church's future, and, and uh, spent an hour or two every morning listening to different messages, uh, reading different things, looking up things, and uh, I attended Jubilee every night except for Monday. I got to go over to the Jubilee, and uh, good services and got to hear a lot of good messages and singing, but uh, by the way, Thursday was our day to pray at Beach Fork, for, and some of you signed up. I had a sign-up sheet to pray around the clock. Now, we were the second biggest church, I believe, that was involved with that and was, uh, had a day to pray for it, and uh, Rubyville is the only other church, I believe, bigger than ours that was uh, involved in that. And I didn't get enough people to pray 24 time slots or however they had it set off, uh, set up there to pray every hour you round the clock. And I had a few. So I want to tell you a few who did sign up, you must have really touched heaven because Thursday night was the best service all week over there. So I'm I just going to let you know that. The ones that did sign up, put forth the effort, God blessed it. So I, I thank you for that. But uh, anyway... Jacob Berry was on schedule to preach Thursday evening and the 11th hour was singing and they just done a wonderful job singing. God fell and people were coming and praying and, and Cal Ray had them sing again and Mike Blanton had them sing again and they sang again and they just kept singing and people kept coming. So Jacob Berry, he was on schedule to preach that night and ended up giving an altar call and there were several who came forward after Jacob gave the altar call and a few were saved and many came for healing and some for spiritual help. But uh, since we're talking about keeping it real, your uh, ADHD pastor, 
I mean, you can think whatever you want. It's nothing against Jacob Berry, but I have a hard time following him. He, uh, he, he has, of course, some deficiencies, some things he has to battle with, and he, he talks in this high pitch, and really, I, I, I don't understand anything he says, but his mom interprets it for him. And she is a sweet, uh, godly lady. You couldn't ask for a sweeter lady. And she interprets whatever Jacob says to us. But I get distracted through that. I'm sorry, but that's, that's my issue that I have. And he, he was preaching and his mom interpreted her talking about it. And I really wasn't looking forward to the message. I'm gonna be honest with you because I struggle with it. But here's the thing. God convicted me when that little man got up there and he started doing what he'd done and people started coming forward and people moving and God convicted me and said, here you are with two good lungs. He's on a ventilator. That's how he lives every day of his life. He's in a wheelchair. And here I am healthy with two good lungs. As far as I know, everything like that works fine, Fred. And what am I doing for God? I mean, this man's traveling all over the United States preaching in revivals and, and going out and ministering for the Lord. And so God really convicted me of what I'm doing. And I, I comment, uh, commented on Calware's preaching in our last revival. And uh, honestly, I've known Calware for years. When we used to travel and sing, we sang a lot of revivals with him. I've heard that man preach a lot of messages. He's one of the best preachers in this whole area. He's one of the best. He has a great ministry, one of the biggest ministries in this area. He runs uh, evangelistic outreach and he's grew that ministry and, and it's become bigger and, and better under him and they're on more stations than they ever were. But Cal Ray, just in the past year or two, has had, he, he and his wife Candy both have had near-death experiences where they nearly left this world. And I'm gonna tell you something. He's preaching with a fervency that I've never seen him preach with before. He's preaching under anointing that I've never seen him preach under before, a, a greater anointing. He's got a sweeter spirit now than he ever had. And he, not that they weren't good before, they were doing a great job. But when he almost lost his life, I think it gave him a whole new outlook on things. From what I can tell, he's committed more than he ever has been and has a new urgency and a, all that. But... And I thought about my bass player over here. He and Mary's attended this church for years. One of my closest friends growing up, I know he's my cousin, but we were more like brothers. And we spent time together. Uh, we either played ball or uh, rode motorcycles or went around circles around Peebles and West Union hundreds and hundreds of times. Every Friday and Saturday night, that used to be the big thing. You rode around town, you know, made the loop. And uh, we, we burn a lot of gas and wore out a lot of tires just going around in circles. But, uh, you know, not that he and Mary weren't committed. They were here every time the doors open. But I can tell something since this man has almost lost his life again and God brought him through it. I can't help but I get blessed when he'll be sitting over by Mary and I'll look over in her service and he's got his hand up in the air and tears rolling down his cheeks. I think he's got a new lease on life and he's looking at things with a different fervency than he did before. So thank God for it. That's right. God delivered him. Got a different outlook on life. I believe he's all in now. That makes a difference, don't it? So I don't want to blow anybody's head up here tonight, but Beach Fork is not like every other church. This place is a little different than some places. I'm not saying we, we don't have a monopoly on the Holy Spirit or anything, but we have slipped a little, I believe, from what maybe we were at one time. And let me give you a couple of scriptures and then I'll, I'll move on with this message. I thought Terry got up and, as he got up and gave his testimony tonight, went right along with this. You know, he, he grew up here in church. He knew all about God, and, but he wasn't where he ought to be. But when he fell off of the ladder or scaffolding or whatever and broke his leg and his hip, it changed his outlook on things and gave him a first day. He's been here ever since. He started coming, hadn't missed a service. So I don't hope that, you know, that it takes one of us coming near death or having something bad happen to wake us up. I hope we can wake up. But let me read you some scriptures here. Acts chapter two, starting with verse 42 now this was just a couple months after Jesus had died, been buried, and raised again. And here these guys were here on the day of Pentecost, or after the day of Pentecost. So they continued steadfastly, talking about the early church. 
They continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship and in breaking bread and in prayers. And fear came upon every soul and many wonders and signs were done by the apostles. Did you hear that about the fear coming up on every soul, everyone? That's, that's what I'm talking about. Sometimes God may have to bring the fear upon us. And all believed that believed were together and had all things common. And they sold their possessions and goods and parted them to all men as every man had need. And they continued daily with one accord in the temple and breaking bread from house to house did eat their meat with gladness and singleness of heart, <laughs> praising God and having favor with all the people and the Lord added to the church daily. Listen to this. As such should be saved. In Acts chapter one, verse eight, Jesus delivered the great commission again to his disciples that he had given them back in, uh, I know in the book of uh, Matthew chapter 28, he gave us the great commission and here he gave it to him again. He said, Be ye, or, but ye shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you and ye shall be witnesses of me both in Jerusalem and in Judea and in Samaria and the uttermost part of the earth. Most of the time, we don't have enough power to witness to our co-workers, let alone go out to Judea and Samaria, the other parts of the earth. But we need the power of God on our life to be able to be witnesses of him today. Now, what have been the pillars of this church here? Or of, I'm talking about a church that's on fire. What have been the pillars of this church? Biblical preaching, verse 42 said, and they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine. You know what that means? That means biblical preaching, biblical doctrine. Not many ways to heaven tonight. We're living in a world that a lot of people's getting their theology from Oprah instead of getting it from the word of God. They're getting their theology from Dr. Phil or somewhere else instead of the word of God. And you know, I've heard Oprah stand and say, oh, you know, there's, I thought that, uh, you know, I was raised, she was raised the right way, I think but somewhere she got sidetracked. But she says now oh, there's many ways, you know, many religions, many ways to heaven. But let me tell you what the Bible says. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth and the life. No man cometh to the Father but by me. That's the scripture according to Jesus and that's what I'm gonna stand on tonight. That's what this church has stood on for the years. That's one of the pillars of this church is that we believe that Jesus is the way to heaven tonight. Now, not many ways. I'm gonna tell you what this said. They continued on steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine. You know what that means? Continually. They had an appetite for the word of God. We need to have an appetite today for the word of God and, and a diet of the word of God and not be eaten on the things of the world or the things that the world has to offer out there. If you continually are feeding on the garbage of this world, don't expect to have the power of God in your life. It don't work that way. We don't need a news brief tonight. You don't need me to get up here and tell you the news. You can watch that for yourself. We don't need to conform to this world. The Bible tells us that, Romans chapter 12, be ye transformed renewing your mind. Don't be conformed to this world, but be you transformed. That's what we need tonight. We need to stand on the truth found in the word of God. And it troubles me when I see people who I know, Mark, has been taught the truth. Many of them raised right here in this church. And I know they were taught the right way. They were taught the things of God. I've got people in my family that I know my sweet mom taught them the right way. She practically raised some of them. But I see them now accepting everything that comes along, conforming to this world. And I'm gonna tell you, that's not the way to heaven. I know tonight where my mother's at. When she left this world, Freddie, I had no doubt in my mind that the angels of God was there to usher her right in to the presence of the Lord. But she didn't get it by just following along with everything that come along. No, she believed the word of God and held his truths in her life. And it troubles me when I see people that they side in with the world on biblical issues that we know the Bible stands firmly against. Now I get it. But there's some things you may want to call gray area. And that's some things are people's conviction. I get all that. 
But I'm going to tell you this, there's some things in the Word of God that's written, some of them in black and white, and some of them's in red in my Bible that Jesus himself said. And I'm going to tell you this, when the Word of God speaks against something, I don't care what the world has to say. If it was sin then, it's sin now. So we got, first of all, the pillar of this church was biblical preaching. Also, the enemy tries to plant doubt in our mind a lot of times. He'll say, well, you know, that may just be the way you was raised, why you feel that way. Well, some of it was the way I was raised, but you know how I was raised? I was raised by a God-fearing mom and dad who read the word of God, Freddie, and who believed the word of God. And I believe that we need to stand on The enemy tries to plant doubt in our minds. Kids, you're gonna go, some of you are graduating, we've had all these ceremonies and all that, and that's great. Now you're off to college, and when you get into college, you're gonna find out there's some people gonna talk to you and tell you some things maybe contrary to what you've been taught from the Word of God. Now I understand you gotta put what they want on the test to pass them. I've been there. I went a to a secular college in the beginning and then I went to a Bible college in the end, then I didn't have to compromise with the word when I went to a Bible college, so there's a good thought. <clears throat> anyway, let's get on with this. Fellowship was the second thing. And it wasn't just eating he was talking about here. Listen to this. It said that they, and fellowship in breaking of bread and in prayers. Well, they did break bread together. They did uh, have fellowship together. And that's a great thing. I enjoy it out here when we have something to eat out here in the fellowship hall and we all fellowship together, I love that. But I also know Brother Deb talked about fellowship as this and it's a simple way to remember. Two fellows in a ship run the same way. Isn't that a good simple thing? Two fellows in a ship run the same way. That's fellowship when we love each other and we love God and we have fellowship. I'm willing to give up my own selfish desires, sometimes my own selfish ambitions for the good of the church or for the good of my brother and sisters. If you're willing to do that, then it, things will work out. That's fellowship. I love you and I love God. Yes. Then the third thing, Christ-centered worship. We do not need to worship for worship's sake. Now, I see a lot of worship, a lot of places, and, and I watch a lot of religious TV and I watch a lot of things and go to different places and I'm not going to find fault with how anybody worships. Everybody's not like us. Everybody worships different. I get that. And you know, worship for worship's sake, just to stand up and sway to the music. I mean, if that's how you worship, go ahead. But that, that's worship, and a lot of times for worship's sake. Here's the thing. When the Spirit of God falls, it's a whole different ball game. You can tell a difference. And here's what I would love to make sure we keep at Beach Fork. It's not about the music. It's not about the swaying. It's not really even about the raising of hands or even the shouting. But it's about Jesus Christ. It's about what he has done for us. It's about lifting up his name and singing an anthem unto him. That's what it's about is lifting up Jesus Christ tonight. And if we're not doing that, let's keep worship centered here at Beach Fork on Jesus. That's what it's all about. We got some great talent here. We got some good singers. We've got some good musicians, but I don't worship the singers or the musicians, or it's not even, we have some good songs with good words, and that's all, but if it's lifting up Jesus, that's what it's all about tonight, is lifting him up. So let's keep our worship centered on him. Then the next thing is fervent prayer. It said they, the apostles' doctrine and fellowship and in breaking of bread and in prayers. This is all right there in verse 42, I just read you. Well, let me read you something in James. Chapter five and verse 13. It says, is there any among you afflicted? Let him pray. Is any merry? Let him sing psalms. Is any sick among you? Let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith shall save the sick and the Lord shall raise him up and if he had committed sins, they shall be forgiven him. Confess your faults one to another. Pray for one another that ye may be healed. The effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. You see all this stuff hanging on the walls here? That's not just junk. 
That's not just stuff that we went to Bob's hardware store and picked up either and hung up there, although some of it probably came from there. But these are witnesses of answered prayers that God has answered here in this church. Some of them are healing back braces, crutches, neck braces, different things that God, a woman with a broken neck came in here and they prayed for her. And she took her neck brace off and spun her head around and around, you know, slung her head around. And I, I was waiting to see if her head was gonna fall off, you know. I was a kid, a young kid. And I thought, that woman's crazy, you know, what's she doing? But her head didn't fall off and she was healed and went on for years and seen her in church many, many times after that. There's things that I've witnessed here myself that I know God was in it and he healed people and he's still healing people today. We just talked about a witness of that, didn't we, a while ago. Thank God. Fervent prayer. When you don't know what to do, I can tell you what to do. Pray. There's things comes up in our lives that we don't know what to do. I can tell you what to do. Pray. <laughs> Let's trust God. Let's pray and ask him what he would have us to do. So those are the four pillars in verse 42 in chapter two of Acts. Then the next few verses go on. <clears throat> we talked about the pillars of the church. They talk about the pulse of the church, what it feels like, what it does, what flows from the foundation. Listen to this. <clears throat> Let me get back here to Acts chapter two. Verse 43, it says, and fear came upon every soul and many wonders and signs were done by the apostles. I'm gonna tell you something. The pulse of a church on fire, what it feels like, what it does, listen to this. It'll be spiritually dynamic. There'll be some signs, there'll be some wonders follow. You know, people, I don't understand how people live sometimes in churches where they go for years and never see anybody saved, never see anybody healed, never see anybody go to the altar. And I'm thinking, what are we going for then? And see, that's a fear I have of Beach Fork becoming like that. Yeah. We've always been taught, Deb always said the time to pray is when you feel like it. Yes. When the Holy Spirit deals with your heart, when you feel that little yes. small voice speaking in your ear, you feel that little drawing, you feel the hair stand up on the back of your neck whenever the preacher's preaching or somebody's giving an altar call, or I don't care if somebody's singing a song and the Lord speaks to you and you know you have a need. Don't, you know, don't become like these people and let these altars stay barren. What is it? Is it your pride? Because we've already heard testimonies tonight. God will get you in a place where you'll lose your pride. I pray it don't come to that in our life. But folks, let's don't let pride keep us from coming to an altar of prayer. Whenever God speaks to you, we want to step out and let him work in our lives. So a church will be spiritually dynamic. There'll be wonders, there'll be signs. There'll be sacrificial giving. What did it say there? They sold their property. Now I'm not telling you to go home and sell the farm and all of you move in a commune together. There've been some crazy people done that. And then they drank the Kool-Aid. I'm not, I'm not telling you to do that. But here's what I am telling you. There'll be sacrificial giving. This church, I'm amazed when there's a need and I say we're gonna set a pan in the back and drop some money in and sometimes I am absolutely amazed with how you all give and, and you know, you, you're faithful. We don't preach on tithing much around here because apparently somebody's paying their tithing because we're keeping the lights on and the bill's paid and we got money in the building fund and we're doing work. We're gonna seal the parking lot. We're gonna fix the air conditioning units out here and put new things to set them on and all kind of things that God, we're getting a scrubber for the dining hall because our floor's getting dingy. We don't have nothing to scrub it with. We got the money to do that and we ought to be thankful for that because God's people are willing to give. Then single-mindedness and unity, listen to this. Verse 46, they continually daily with one accord in the temple and breaking bread from house to house did eat their meat with gladness and singleness of heart. Single-minded unity, verse 46 there, one accord in the temple. I'm gonna tell you something. If we come in here and everybody's fussing with each other, if you're here tonight 
Now, I'm going to tell you, I was talking about keeping it real. My wife, I make her nervous when I talk about things. She said, sometimes you may just give them too much information. I've had more response from people that told me that they got help because, see, people can't identify with the godliest people, but they want to identify with somebody they know is like them. If they think that you just, you know, sometimes I get this from preachers that they act like that they've never done wrong, that they're, everything that they do is all on the up and up. I'm going to tell you, there was mornings when we got our girls ready for church that we fought all the way to church. We fought with the kids, we fought with each other, and then we'd come to church and they'd sing something and we'd raise our hand, you know, or whatever. Was we hypocrites? No. We're human. I get sick and tired of hearing about hypocrites. I'm gonna tell you something. If you find any, per the only perfect man I ever knew, they hung him on a cross and killed him. They didn't want him in their world. And I'm gonna tell you something. If you think there's anybody in Beach Fork Church that's perfect, go stay with them a few days. You'll find out probably they'll let you down. You'll find out they're not as perfect maybe as you thought they were. But I'm gonna tell you this. People wanna know that you're like them. That's right. I was talking to my buddy, Johnny Wayne, yesterday at the graduation thing. And, you know, when people are messing with our kids, my sweet little wife, about as sweet as anybody come along, but buddy, you mess with one of her kids, she'll yank your hair out if she has to, I'll guarantee it. I've seen that fire come out in her eyes whenever somebody messed with her kids. She ain't gonna have it. Sometimes she's that way with her husband. <laughs> if you pick on me, she might be on you too. I don't know. But I'm going to tell you, people have gotten more help, I believe, from knowing that we struggle just like you struggle. The only difference is we got God on our side that we can go to. And when I do mess up, you know what the Bible says? I have an advocate with the Father. Yes. When I do mess up, when I do wrong, Tate, I can lift my prayer up to him and say, God, you here I am again. You know me. You know what I've done. God made me who I am. Now I know life shapes you a lot of times. Things in life may make you hard, may make you, uh, but if anybody ever seen a brown that didn't have a hot temper somewhere down the line, you let me know. I'd like to meet them. But I ain't never met a brown yet that if you rub them the wrong way, you get a little fire out of them. That's right. Oh, don't get quiet on me. Probably some of you are like that too. You might not be a brown, but I bet you got that too. But I am so glad. If, uh, they have always talked about we got a God that's able to temper us. When they make maddox to dig with, you know what they do when they treat that steel? They heat treat it, and they get it to where if you get it too hard, what'll happen? You hit a rock or something with it, it'll break it. You get it too soft and you hit a rock with it and it'll bend it. But you gotta temper it. And I believe God is able to temper you and I. If I didn't have some bit of backbone, Freddie, we'd be worthless in this world. We wouldn't stand up for our own or for what's right or for anything else. But we also don't have to fly off the handle every time something goes wrong. He can temper us and keep us under control. And I've had to have him do that. And when I've got out of control, you know what I had to do? I had to get on my knees and repent. He didn't leave me in the dark one minute. I don't get by with acting like that. Maybe you can, I don't know. Do you know what the hardest thing to eat in life is? Is eating crow. Man, I've had to eat crow. And I don't like it. So I've learned the hard way. Sometimes you're better off just keep your mouth shut. Then in verse 47, I'm gonna move, I'm gonna get off that because you all, I, done, I lost half of you right there. Praising God and having favor with all the people and the Lord added to the church daily. Soul winning is natural for a church that's on fire. But I'm gonna tell you, when you don't have the fire of God, when you don't have the power of God working, you won't see a whole lot of results from it. But when you got God working and the power of God, the fire of God in a church, 
it'll naturally bring people to their knees. I'm ready to take the next step. We got something here at this church that's way bigger than you and me. Something way bigger than me and you. We're part of something. We're part of a kingdom. We're part of a world. That's not this world, but it's God's kingdom that we're part of. Way bigger than me and you. And I don't know what God's got for us next. I love the fact that we have people take membership this morning. That they're committing to God and to Beach Fork Church. And I don't know what God has for us, what the next step is, but I'm gonna tell you something. I am ready to step into it. Whatever it is that God has got for us, I'm ready to take the next step. How about you tonight? Are you ready to take the next step of whatever God's got for you in your life tonight? I'm telling you, I don't wanna see it take a life and death situation to get us where we need to be to the place of commitment that we'll commit our life to him. But it's okay, isn't it, Terry, if that's what it takes? I'm thankful that Terry answered the call and he's been here. Thank God for that tonight. Are you ready to take the next step tonight, whatever God has for you? Let's stand to our feet tonight. I know it's graduation night. You've all partied hardy for the last two or three days and you're wore out. You've ate too much cake and, and all that. But I thank you for staying awake. I didn't see anybody sleep tonight. Thank you all for staying awake and listening to the message tonight. Has God spoke to you? Has he got something for you to do or have you asked him? God, have you got something for me to do? A place for me to go? Something different for me to do for you? Have we asked him to lead us to the next step, whatever that may be? I mean, it may be something as simple as helping with the food pantry, unload food and load it up and put it in boxes and sort it out. That may be a job God's got for you. Brother Tim Throckmorton's part of the Family Research Council and they're doing a community impact team that they're trying to get together in communities all over the United States and we are going to try to be part of that and I got some people in mind and we got a Zoom meeting this week and I'm going to try to contact some of you that showed interest and give you the time and all that of that Zoom meeting. I'd like for you to be there. You can watch it on my computer if it works. If sometimes we have internet, sometimes we don't. But <laughs> Anybody at all tonight, God has spoke to you and you know that you're not where you ought to be. Or you know he's leading you to something else. Or maybe you just got in a question in your mind. What is the next step? I've made this statement and I'm gonna tell you it's the truth. I don't have any problem doing God's will when I know that it's God's will. I don't have no problem stepping into it, Lisa. Sometimes I have a harder time knowing God's will. And you know how you have to get that sometimes from getting on your knees and talking to him and asking him to show you what his will is, what the next step is for your life. It may be, some of you, it may be college. Some of you, it may be marriage. Some of you, it may be a new job. I don't know what your next step may be, but I know we want to take him with us wherever we go, right? Amen. Amen. Anyone at all need prayer tonight? Want to step out? Want to use this altar? The enemy will try to put every doubt in your mind, tell you every reason that you should not come up here and pray tonight. He'll try to give you every excuse in the book if you'll listen to him. But how about listening to what God's saying to you tonight? Anyone want to come and pray? Amen. Then I got a church that I believe is going to make the next step. You're going to move into what? I expect to see a lot of new faces here and some people getting saved because that's what God wants for this church. So I expect to see that and hear that out of you. And if uh, you need help with that, you let me know and we'll pray together and see what God has got. Okay? God bless you all. We love you. Come back Wednesday night. Sister Debbie Bear will be here. Our former pastor be here to preach for us Wednesday night. So we're looking forward to that. God bless you. We love you.